Oh, hi, sorry. You caught me in the middle of trying to hang up my beat-em-ups movie poster, which you can buy at pixelempire.com. Look, lately I've been asked a bunch of questions, mostly about these three games. Mario, Persona Strikers, and Bravely Default. Namely, why didn't I talk about them? Well, the answer might surprise you. I forgot. And also, I don't really like one of them. I've made a reputation of reviewing almost every Nintendo Switch game on my channel, so... Let's just whack them out all at once. First up, Mario. Let's begin with Mario 3D World. If my addiction is playing Nintendo Switch games, Nintendo's addiction is with Wii U games and porting every single one onto the Switch. So the announcement of Mario 3D World being ported to Switch surprised no one. It is so well designed, so perfectly crafted, so gorgeous, and so fun in every single element. I do not understand why in God's name they would port that other 2D Mario Deluxe game to Switch before porting this. But what was surprising was that it was coming with an add-on game. Wait, what? Why was there a- What are they doing? What? Yeah, a whole extra game, Bowser's Fury. The details of this extra game were a mystery for a long time, and when finally revealed, it looked like a weird mix between Mario Odyssey and Mario 3D World, a, a mini game that sort of branched the generational gap between these two games. Gotta be honest, I had no interest in playing 3D Mario World again, love the game. I think it's one of the best Mario games they've made for a long time, Odyssey aside. But I played it. Been there, done that. Let's go. I was instantly hooked, and it did not take me long to find every single cat shrine and 100% the game. I don't know how, in 2021, I can play yet another Mario game and be surprised again and again by new mechanics, fresh feeling gameplay, and a brand new experience. While Bowser's Fury isn't as fully fleshed out as Mario Odyssey was, it still gave us a possible glimpse into the future of Mario games. This game was one giant playground. If you wanted to get to another area within this admittedly small world, you just had to walk your happy little legs there. Or, you know, jump, glide, pipe, slide there, but you had to get there. There was no load screens. Even in Odyssey, you had to load from area to area. But that feeling of just walking up to the next area, walking into the next level without any waiting and you being able to have as much fun as you want getting from point A to point B without being stopped in a loading screen, could be that glimpse into what an Odyssey 2 or the next Mario game might have in store. Also, Bowser's Fury was just really fun and we got a Super Saiyan Goku cat and an actual scary Bowser. This Bowser is terrifying because the same Bowser as this Bowser. <laughs> what a great time I'm having making the video I'm making. But stop that because this video is sponsored by Skillshare. <laughs> Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. There's a class for anything and everything. Marquise Brownlee, Marquez Brownlee, a YouTuber with 14 million subscribers just created a class for those looking at YouTube and how to be successful on this dumb platform. It covers everything from writing a script to shooting, editing, growing the channel, and more. Of course, I didn't need that class. I probably do, because I don't have 14 million <laughs> subscribers, but there's a ton of other great classes that I took. And you might be looking into just improving your own self, whether that's baking, creative art, learning a language, playing an instrument, or balloon twisting for you inspiring clowns. <laughs> now is the time to start doing that thing that you've always wanted to do. Yes, I'm looking at you. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. And it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. To make it even better, the first 1,000 of you, 1,000 of you to click that link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring yet another video. I appreciate you. Now, let's get back to... Uh, Whatever this was. <laughs> what a bundle of laughs we're having. Next up, Bravely Default. I'm 
walking on eggshells. Oh, <laughs> walking on eggshells. I don't really have much to say about Bravely Default 2, other than I respect it. Bravely Default 2 is unapologetically a traditional JRPG. It is straight cut, straight shooting, what you see is what you get. This game caters heavily to traditional JRPG fans in the best way. There's no frills, there's no flair, and that's why I got a little bored. <laughs> I didn't really want to talk about this game. I had a ton of people ask me to talk about this game, but I was hoping I could just brush it under the rug and keep on moving because I'm just not a fan of the series. <laughs> doesn't mean it's a bad game. The name Bravely Default actually comes from the turn-based gameplay and the two commands you can use, Brave and Default. Brave essentially lets you skip ahead and use extra moves, turns, items, all in the one go. So if you see an enemy is on the ropes, you can unleash four or five attacks on it at once and wiping it out. But you gotta be careful because if you don't wipe it out and you use four or five turns worth of moves, then your character just has to sit there and wait and take attacks for four or five turns defenseless which is where default comes in. If you use default, you can bank a move and save it up for later. It's a huge risk and reward mechanic, which you can use to end easier battles early or turn the tide in tougher battles. I guess where this game went wrong for me, my, it, it might have been my own psyche. I knew this game wasn't being developed by the original developers of the last two games. In fact, this one was handed off to a brand new studio who before this had only made a couple of mobile games. And I gotta admit, as soon as I found that out, I became hesitant. And I just couldn't shake it the entire time I was playing the game that it kind of felt like a mobile game. Not that that's a bad thing. If the game is fun, the game is fun. But I also wasn't having a ton of fun because it is just a straight shoot traditional JRPG. The dialogue is long. The gameplay is extremely grindy. And sometimes I do think, hey, because I don't really like this game or games like this too much, should I even be talking about it? But I think I should be in a way because as someone who does love JRPGs and Persona 4 is one of my favorite games of all time. I think it's safe to say that, okay, but not every JRPG is for everyone. And if you're looking at this game and you actually want to know what I think about it or if you might like it, the answer is maybe not. But if you love old school Square Enix games and old school Final Fantasies, you'll probably love this game. Oh, I didn't really like that one, did I? Well, good news is Persona's next and this game's so good, I can't break it. Just kidding. Did someone say Persona 4? Oh yeah, it was me. <laughs> Persona 5 Strikers both excites me and annoys me. This glorious game is really incredible. Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal is one of the best JRPGs you will find and you will play. And this game is the one that I and so many of us wanted to be ported to Switch. It seemed like a no brainer. There were even hints, I don't know, like Joker coming to Smash? And yet it never happened. Instead, we heard about Persona 5 Scramble. And then later on, that changed to Persona 5 Strikers. The reason why this excites and annoys me is, well, it's a really fun. It's a really fun. <laughs> but it's also a sequel. Essentially, it carries on from where the last game left off with a whole new story, side story. It doesn't really talk about what happened in this game too much, but you are picking up where it left off with all these pre-established friendships and characters that the game kind of expects you to already know and understand. But if you haven't played this one, you won't. And if you only have a Switch in this game, you have no way of playing this one. That annoyance aside, it's still an exciting game and it's not what you think. If you haven't played Persona 5 Strikers and you hear its origin story, developed by Koei Tecmo Games, the same developers who have taken all these other franchises and given them the Dynasty Warriors treatment, like Hyrule Warriors, which we just experienced, you might naturally assume, ah, okay, so it's a Warriors game, but with Persona characters, I don't need to worry about that. But you're actually wrong, in a way, very much. Yes, you're wrong. Because while the combat itself draws similarities with a ton of enemies that you have to wail on, outside of that, 
This is essentially just another Persona game. A little watered down, but it feels that way. To start with, it is about 30 to 40 hours long, much longer than any of the other Warrior games and much closer to a Persona length. It has a fully fleshed out story with the traditional Persona animated cutscenes, as well as full voice acting from the original cast. It does kind of try to recreate the feeling of the first Persona game following that day and night cycle, but you don't really have much control over it. It is pretty linear. There are parts where you do get to freely explore Shibuya, but it's only in a couple of areas and you can only visit a few shops and buy a few things and it's not like you can do the after school activities, but it does recreate that feeling with the same characters that we knew from the original game. And the story itself, is really good. It hooked me and that alone kept me playing through the game. It's a really interesting twist on the original game. And the level layouts aren't what you'd expect either. These aren't Dynasty Warrior big open areas that you just run around wailing on till time runs out. They are actually these structured levels that you sneak around in just like a Persona game. You can first strike enemies just like in a Persona game, but then it becomes this big battle against a ton of enemies. And then you use all your attacks to wail on them, switching between all the different characters in your party, but you can also take those traditional Persona turn-based elements, cast spells or special attacks, you even get to visit the Velvet Room, create new Personas by splicing them together, or level up your existing ones. Other than that, a lot of the same structure is intact here, and if you're a Persona fan, I really do feel like you at least need to give this one a shot. Two things for everyone crying in the comment sections below, by the way. One, I know my form is terrible. It's hard to throw something and also get into a good swinging position. And two, all of these were fake. I'm not actually breaking real Switch games out here. What do I look like? RGT85? <laughs> Bye.